So as everybody here knows, I pretty much bleed blue and green. The Vancouver Canucks are my hometown team, and as a guy who covers this team on YouTube, it's been pretty sad the past few years. There have only really been like a few moments where true bliss and happiness was achieved cheering for the Vancouver Canucks in the past... Oh my goodness, how many years have we been making videos? It's been a while. And it's unfortunate because the stretch the Canucks are on right now where... Garland, Horvat, Miller, Demko are all out on protocol against the Florida Panthers team that just absolutely whooped Edmonton yesterday. It's gonna be pretty entertaining, if I do say so myself. Thank you, Spencer Martin, for your service, but I'm not sure how well it's going to go. But when it comes to the Canucks, even though they might be screwed technically with what's going on with the team, there are other Canadian organizations that have been sort of screwed too. Calgary, as we mentioned, have been sort of on the decline, and Edmonton is in an even worse position than they were before. Today's video is going over the Oilers and just how things have gone for them, because when you go over some of the things that have been said recently, it kind of makes for a lot more panic than you would initially anticipate when you just see, okay, yesterday what happened? The Oilers lost 6 nothing to the Panthers. As Mr. Audie James put it on Twitter, by the way, Audie, fantastic follow, very good friend of mine, he started watching this Oilers and Panthers game a little bit into the third period. And he said this, the Panthers have had seven shots since I started watching, four of which have been goals. You don't need me to show you what's going on here, but guys like Barkov coming in here, sniping it left and right, it got so bad that we saw multiple jerseys thrown onto the ice in Edmonton, and now you take a look at where this team has gone since that loss. The poor goaltending on this team is fully on Ken Holland, Ryan Rashog says. Two years in a row, he failed to address it, and now he is seeing it crush the spirit of his team. The Oilers showed up to play tonight, and goaltending, theirs and Florida's, decimated a fragile team again. What does he mean? Well, the Oilers, to their credit, actually played a pretty okay game. You see 6 nothing, you think, okay, the Oilers got dominated. Well, that might not actually have been the case. The Oilers went out there with a pretty good amount of shots. They had 40 shots on goal compared to the Panthers' 28, although the score was indeed 6-0 Florida. Bobrovsky came out here, stood in his head. Miko Koskinen, on the other hand, absolutely did not. He had a 7-8-6 save percentage in this game, and if you take a look at his overall profile, it's not great. Miko Koskinen this year has a... 3-3-3 three, three, three goals against average and an 8-9-5 save percentage. Not great in the slightest. So, that brings us to a few other quotes that we can go over here. This is what Sportsnet Stats tweeted out. Connor McDavid is goalless in eight straight home games for the first time since his rookie season. And in fact, if you want to talk even more about Connor McDavid, this is a comment that I found on Reddit, on the Canucks subreddit. It's a post talking about how it's a perfect night for Canucks fans, how Edmonton got blown out, hilarious as always, LA lose to Colorado, San Jose lose to the Kraken, go Canucks go, ignore Miller and Demko please. This user went out there and posted a quote from Sportsnet 590 Radio on October 4th, 2019. This is what Elliot Friedman said two years ago. Appearing on Sportsnet 590 Radio on Friday, Elliot Friedman said that he believes that the new GM, Ken Holland, because you gotta remember he came into the position that he is in today, two years ago, he will have two years to prove to McDavid that the team is heading in the right direction. However, he also believes that McDavid is getting impatient with the organization. Now, it's kind of funny, isn't it? I kind of remember hearing this quote back when it was said in 2019. When I read this on the Canucks sub, I was like, huh, that kind of does ring a bell. Like, I'm sort of familiar with that sentiment that Friedman had. A two-year timeline, McDavid, he's here, he's the best player in the world, he was back then, he still is today, and he's getting impatient. Two years is what Ken Holland will have to prove to Connor that this is a good enough team to stick around on. But what happened? We're two years into the future. I mean, two years and a bit. It's October 2021, which is now January 2022. So two years and a few months, we are away removed from this quote. And what? The Oilers are even worse than they've been back then. The Oilers have had two years to address goaltending. Mike Smith, Miko Koskinen not getting it done. Dave Tippett going out there and blaming one goalie and defending the other in the media. Leon Dreisaitl getting pissy here all of a sudden. They're not interviewing Paul Yarvey anymore because they know that his energy doesn't really fit with the vibe that these media pressers are going for right now. 
Edmonton is in shambles. The team just a few months ago were 16-5, and five, where McDavid and Dreisaitl were torching the league, Ryan Nugent Hopkins was up there in points, you had all these good things happening, and they went from 16-5 and five to 18-16-2. and two. Oh my goodness, what a terrible record right there. Two wins, what is the math on that, 11 losses and two overtime losses since the Oilers were on that 16-5 and five stretch? Since December 3rd, here are some more Sportsnet stats for you. The Oilers are .200 in points percentage, which is last. Goals against per game, they've got 413 goals against, which is last. Save percentage, 865, since December 3rd, it's last. Goal differential, minus 27, that's last. The PK is 63%, which is also last. I'll do you one better, Sportsnet, because Vancouver and their penalty kill was actually worse than this, I believe, before Bruce Boudreaux came in, so there you go, there's me taking shots at my own team. But my team, as we all have known, wasn't really assembled the best way by Jim Benning. He made some questionable acquisitions, there's some questionable money being handed out to guys like Tucker Pullman and OEL and Myers and all that, it's just defense has been kind of bad. Edmonton is in a different position. They're supposed to be good. They're supposed to be a lot better. They had two years to prove to McDavid that this is a legit team. Two years ago, it was a problem, and it's a problem today still. If Elliot Friedman believes McDavid was growing impatient two years ago, what's the status now? I want an update. I want somebody to go out there into the media who actually has ins on this. I don't want anybody, you know, just random duds like me and you sitting on our couches spreading lies to go out there and say, oh, McDavid is wanting out. I want somebody in a prominent media role like a Sarah Valey or a Drager or a LeBron or a Friedman or a Merrick to go out there and give us an update. What is Connor McDavid thinking? What is Leon Dreisaitl thinking? He may not have been pissy the other day when Matheson was asking him questions, but I'd sure as heck be pissy now if the team goes out there and loses 6 nothing after dominating the game shots-wise. This team is hilarious, and I don't really know if I'm making any enemies by making this video, but you know what? Oilers fans, you guys have been very... Very open to my videos and very open to my commentary about your teams. You call out the team when they're doing well, and I praise you guys for that. I praise McDavid, I praise Dreisaitl, I make videos talking about how good you guys are. But when things go wrong, y'all are still up in there dissecting, analyzing, and just telling it like it is. So I kind of respect that. I don't like how some fan bases can be super delusional. Oh, we've lost X amount of games, we're still good enough to make the playoffs and all that. The doom and gloom in Edmonton right now has been kind of refreshing because it's like everybody is on the same page. Oilers fans agree that McDavid and Dreisaitl are being mishandled and they're kind of being wasted here in Oil Town. Canucks fans believe that. NHL fans believe that. It's just sad, dude. Just watching everything go down with this team. We went over all the stats in today's video. Like, how can you be last in terms of goal differential since December 3rd when you have two of the best players in the world? This is what happens when they go cold at the same time. This is what happens when you have so many players that don't really do much outside of the top two. And this is what happens when you have goaltending that is subpar. You don't have a team that can go out there and actually win. You have two players that can go out there and win whenever they're hot. When they're not hot, things get a lot worse. And so we'll end this video off by talking about the Canucks since I started it off talking about the Canucks. Vancouver is playing Florida today and... I really don't know what to expect. The Oilers did play themselves a pretty okay game yesterday, they just got goalied by Bobrovsky and Koskinen. Yeah, the blame is very much on their own goaltender as well. So Florida, technically, coming on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, the Canucks are going to be having Spencer Martin in net, likely, and DiPietro backing him up, because Demko and Halak are both out. No Miller, no Garland, no Horvat. If there is a game where Elias Pettersson needs to come up and show that he is EP40, this is the game. But when you're going up against a Florida team that is as good as this Florida team is, it starts to get pretty freaky. So don't be surprised if in about 12 hours from now, I'm making a similar video talking about how the Canucks ended up losing pretty badly to Florida in the same way that the Oilers did yesterday. Now, sure, I don't think no matter how bad things go tonight for Vancouver, we're going to see a jersey or two or three thrown out onto the ice because I think everybody in Canucks Nation can kind of understand, okay, if there's a game that the Canucks should probably go out there and lose, it's this one. Screw the second half of a back-to-back, -back. the Vancouver Canucks are a fraction of their former selves, so talk to me in the comments what do you think about the Oilers and the Panthers and everything Florida has done to these Canadian teams. Do you think there is a timeline of expiry for Connor McDavid? Do you remember the quote that Friedman had two years ago? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts, I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.